bond fundamentals and do you know understand a plain vanilla bond this particular presentation whenever the bond is released it goes to the secondary market it's known as on the run bonds so then then the price of the bonds change as bonds are either traded on exchange or over the counter a change in the price of the bond causes the change in the yield of the bond so when we were talking about we were always talking about yield so when we talked about yield we are talking about current yield current yield is uh, annual coupon interest divided by price of the bond price of the bond since keeps on changing the the annual coupon interest will always remain the same on the face value of the bond the price of the bond will keep on changing hence the yield if the price goes up the yield comes down value model which i have uploaded on the middle road and any increase in the required yield would have a increases the price of the bond right how the yield price relationship moves we are talking to yield to maturity it is basically the interest rate which will make the present value equal to the price of the bond the yield to maturity is the discount factor it, it is basically the return of the bond when it is held to maturity the usually the bonds are not held to maturity they are traded either on the stock exchange or over the counter since the price of the bonds keeps on changing the yield to maturity would be very different yields of the bonds will be changing every time so the price would decide the yield of the bond when we are looking at yield to maturity we'll use this concept to discount the bonds so basically it it will act as the discounting factor since the discounting factor is in the denominator a increase in the disc discounting factor would decrease the price basically we will be discounting the cash flows with a ytm or the yield to maturity and that will sort of reduce the price the higher the yield of maturity or higher the yield you desire uh, from the bond the prices are would lower so it's basically inversely related to the price of the bond see a example we look at the example to see how the yields basically change for a bond take the same example and calculate we'll start with base value of a bond is 1000 the coupon rate is 7% paid semi semi annually basically you will be taking now 7% would be the coupon would be 7 7% or 1000 which is 70 30 into so it's 70 is paid into installments which is 35 one time period now what is the yield of the bond during the issuance the yield of the bond is basically the the coupon rate which is the annualized coupon which you get divided by price of the bond so it and the price of the bond changes to 102 coupon yield of the bond becomes 6.98% idea about the bond let's go and look at another the same example but let's calculate the price of the bond let's say the face value is the same bond coupon is 7% now i made an excel sheet and we'll see what happens when there is an annual payment and when there is a semi annual payment the time to maturity is 4 years so i've taken it it's in the short run it's a short term bond of 4 years this is just an example i made an excel sheet which you can use you can use different kind of simulation exercises in them we'll use how to use excel how to use excel function and simply use discounting rate now when i want to find the valuation of a bond it's the present value of the bond is what we are going to be discounting through the cash flows to have coupon rate so if what i'll be doing is i'll be taking coupon and discounted by the yield to maturity which will be using yield to maturity concept rate discount the cash flows final last uh, cash flow is got both the coupon and the principal amount i have taken that both equal to same out here usually you you could you will be finding in books the principal amount is separate and the last coupon payment is separate but i have combined that both for the cash flows in this case we know the the coupon rate is 7% the face value is 1000 so the annualized coupon payment is 7% which is 0.07 into 1000 is equal to 70 70 is paid in two installments in a year if, if i take year 1 to year 4 year 1 is broken into two which is 6 months here 6 months here and 6 months here you will be paid 35 coupon here and 35 coupon again you will now have 4 is the total number of periods so 4 into 2 becomes a total period so you have eight time periods when you are going to be paid the coupon now in the last time period which is like in the fourth year the last time period eighth one you are getting coupon of 35 plus you have a principal repayment of 1000 
which is the last cash flow. We have different YTM. So I want to see how the price changes when I change the yield to maturity. YTM now will get divided by 2. Since the time period is, if it was annualized, then you will consider the annualized YTM yield to maturity. However, now since it's semi, semi annualized, you divide YTM by 2. Let's say if I'm looking at a yield to maturity of 7.5 percent, you, the YTM now will become 7.5 percent divided by 2. See this in Excel. 35 coupon paid every year will be 1 plus YTM by 100. Plus, as the time periods increases, the N factor would increase. So, your present cash flows which you are calculating will become 1 plus YTM by 100 square plus 35 1 plus YTM by 100 cube. So, this is the third time period. So, this will go on till the end and on the 8th, this will go and on the 8th time period, you, you have 1035 divided by 1 plus YTM to the power 8, which is the 8 time. First calculate to the YTM root. The cash flows, there are 8 periods. It's a 4 year bond. So I've taken 8. It divided into 8 periods because it's paid semi-annually. 70 coupon is paid uh, in 2 installments. So you have 35, 35 being paid over a period of uh, 8 years. 8th year you have principal which is coming back. It's a bond. So the, the issuer is going to pay back the bond over principal amount which is 1000. 35 is the coupon amount. I want to see what is the YTM. Now YTM is yield to maturity which the it, the bondholders want. This YTM you could change. If I if I want a 6% YTM, the half yearly YTM becomes 3% which is what going to be my discounting factor. What I have taken is, I have taken discount factor, I have added the discount factor here to the YTM which you can automatically change. Let's say if I want it at 6.5% comes 3.25 and the discounting factor changes to 1.033. This discounting factor, you are going to be discounting it by 1.033. So if you divide 1 by 1.033, you get 97. I have marked it in blue because as we are going to be, you know, taking it forward, this cell is going to remain constant. And I want to take the time period for second year. You will be squaring this off. So one way of squaring this off is multiplying this with itself, which is this Every time I go down for the third period, it would be basically multiplication of this uh, second period into the first period. That is why I have put a, the dollar sign here in both dollar sign fixes up a cell. When you take it down, the value changes. For example, I have taken an example out here. Now the same thing is replicated here. Only thing is I have put four digits here. I want to take it down. All I have to do is I will just drag it down. What will happen is that now this cell is uh, this is getting multiplied by 0.97 and you get the same value. So if I round it off to two, for example, this you will say this will come to directly the same value. So what I do is I just do the right click. I go to format cells. I go to number and I put two in here. So you see it's 0.94. 0.91. So I'll be sharing this Excel. What you do is like you will be just multiplying. So I've already divided and seen the discount factor. Multiply annual payment with the discount factor to get the present value of the cash flows. When I add it up, price of the bond comes as 1017.35. Now you can do the same in Excel. In Excel, if you want to do, you will be using the function of uh, present value 25 as the discounting factor because semi analyzed the uh, payments are paid semi annually. I have taken the number of periods as 8, D, which you will see is the coupon per period, which is basically I have calculated as uh, 35, which is the coupon. Coupon will be nothing but coupon rate into the face value. Right in the Excel, this is automatically linked to the side. You will have the face value. You'll have to say future value, which is thousand and you have to put zero. Zero is like when you're going to be paid. So you'll always select at the end of the period, which is like the right way of selecting it. If this was annualized bond where the payment was on an annualized basis, what you'll do, you, the, the coupon is 20. So it's paid once a year and the time to maturity or the yield to maturity will be annualized, which is 6%. Whatever I change here would actually make changes out here. So the different, you know, scenarios when you get in, what is the price to yield relationship as an example? What sort of price at a different price points you can sit down at home and look at it. So this is, and there'll be a lot of problems for, for you to.
you talk about yield price relationship an example here what we have seen if the coupon rate is 7 when the required rate is 7 the selling price of 1000 which is the time of the issuance it's at par whenever the price increases which is the yield gets reduced you have price the bond is trending above par which is premium premium to the face value and when the yields go down the coupon rate of course is, remains as the same as 7% is goes below par very important. Uh, there is a lot of talk about yield curves. Just an overview, and I'll go at a later date in depth on this on this topic. Term structure is basically the relationship between the yield and maturities of comparable bonds of similar credit quality. Whenever we are plotting a yield curve, is basically of the treasuries. So one of the most important concepts, like I've discussed about, is a zero coupon bond rate, which is also the spot rate. You take spot rates of different maturities of treasury and plot the yield curve. This is the yield curve of Canada. I got this from Bank of Canada site. The yield curve is basically spot rates or zero coupon bond rates of different maturities. So it goes from three months to 30 years. You take the spot rates of different maturities and you start plotting them. This is what you get is Yield curve is a very good uh, barometer of understanding how well the economy is doing. So there are three types in generally three types of uh, yield curve. One is flat. This is the one which right now is shown is steepening. The third is uh, inverse uh, yield curve. Now again discuss that at a later date. The here is just to understand the concept of a yield curve. Come to valuation, valuation of a bond. How do we value a zero coupon bond? Here is an example of a 10 year bond which has got a, the required yield is 7.75%. Redemption value is 100. So in a zero coupon bond, although it's of 10 years, you will actually take the periods to be 20 years. You divide it into six months period. Hence, your N is going to change to 20. Your rate is going to come down to 3.8% uh, because this is the yield which you will be, uh, the rate which you are going to be discounting with. So ultimately, the price would be 100 divided by 1.03875 to the power 20. N has doubled, the rate comes down to half, is the concept which you looked at before. Why we have not discussed callable, non callable uh, bonds is because we need to first understand what the call option means. It's a very generic, I'll be only talking about call option and buying a call option. This is a payoff of uh, buying a call option. We will not be looking at what is a payoff of selling a call option, understanding basic understanding of what a call option is. Call option is it gives the the right but not an obligation to buy an asset at a particular price at a certain price at a predetermined time it could be at a certain time or during a period of time for this the call holder pays a premium which is uh, that is what i've shown here this is the premium which uh, the holder is paying to get to buy that option so there are two major types of option european and american there are other types of option, but we are not going to be discussing exotic options and other types of option. Now, whenever you're buying an option, it's called an excise price, also known as a strike price. That's a price you would be buying that particular asset at. It's got a time to expiration or maturity. Now, maturity date uh, could vary. It could be as low as one month or less, and it could be as high as, it could be daily options also you have. It could be as high as a year or more. We will not be going into depth on the different kinds of maturity. Now, whenever you are buying an option, you as a long, which means whenever I'm saying I'm long an option, I, but it means is I'm buying into an option. American options can be exercised anytime during the expiration date. Now, discussing American option only uh, today. Uh, European options are options which are exercised at maturity. But however, for the sake of uh, covering examples today, we'll be talking about American options. Well, here I am we look at it what we mean by a call option so that you have a fair good idea of at least a basic understanding what a call option means and we today are only looking buying a call option not going to be looking at what be the off for a selling call option is a three month option to buy option on middle road opc private limited so that hypothetical example middle road opc private limited is my company to be buying an option usually you don't buy an option on one single uh, you will have a lot of shares out here i've just considered 100 as a lot of shares you're paying a premium which is the premium you're paying 100 to purchase lot which is of 100 shares at a strike price of 300 share price right now is trading at 285 and this is an american option basically you can buy and sell any any time it's a three month option in that three month option if the stock price does not touch 300, you will not exercise the option because why will you buy a stock 
at 300 when it is traded at less than 300 because you're going to be making a loss. In this terms, the loss is 100. We got 100 shares or bought at 100. Basically, you have paid one unit per share. Basically, if the stock price goes up by 301, anytime more than 301, you are going to be making money. For example, let's say in two months time, the stock is trading at 305 and you're going to go into the market and sell it for 305. So basically, you're going to be making of uh, four units of profit share. The profit over a period of a lot of 100 shares becomes 400.